emits a continuous spectrum. What does it mean, continuous spectrum? It emits wide range of frequencies, wide range of wavelengths. Okay, this is very important. A perfectly black body emits a continuous spectrum of radiation. That's to say, the radiation emitted by a heated black body has a wide range of frequencies. Wide range of frequencies means wide range of wavelengths. The radiation of the black body which affects the eye as light okay, extends roughly from 400 nanometer to 800 nanometer. So the radiation of the black body, which the eye can detect, can see, okay, ranges from 400 nanometer to 800 nanometer. 800 is the red, 400 is the, yes, violet or blue. So once again, the radiation of the black body, which affects the eye as light, extends roughly from 400 to 800 nanometer. This is the visible spectrum. Okay, when the black body is made hotter, okay, its radiation becomes not only more intense, not only more intense, but also more nearly white. The proportion of blue to red in it increases. Okay, for example, if you watch the filament of a lamp, if you watch the filament of a lamp and the current through it is gradually increased, you will see it begin to glow a deep, dull red. Okay? Deep, dull red at the beginning when it starts glowing. Then it becomes orange yellow and eventually appear white. It has gone from warm to red hot and to white hot as temperature increases. Okay, so we managed to define the black body and we've got something we want to explain. If you watch the filament of a lamp and we will increase the temperature of the filament, the question is why? And how? How to increase it? First of all, we'll increase the current passing through it. But we'll uh, see something very strange. It will start when it starts glowing, the color will be red. Then it will be orange yellow, and eventually it will be white. We want to explain this. The question why? Because it is considered as an example of a black body. So, stay with us. Some important facts that can be deduced from the previous curves. Okay, and now we've got the curves of the radiation emitted from a black body. Your attention, we've got something here. We've got a region that most scientists found it very difficult to explain. The region of the ultraviolet. We don't have a peak in this region. They found it very difficult that they called it ultraviolet catastrophe. They couldn't explain why we couldn't have a peak at ultraviolet. Your attention, please. What we've got here, we've got the curves of the radiation of the black body. We call it Planck's distribution curves. It is at various temperatures, at 4,000 Kelvin, 5,000 Kelvin, and 6,000 Kelvin. And your attention, please. We've got something we call it lambda maximum, the wavelength which corresponds to maximum radiation. Okay? What happens to it? It decreases. It shifts towards, yes, shorter wavelengths, higher frequencies. So we've got some facts concerning the radiation of the black body. First of all, the area between any curve and the wavelength axis 
gives the, the total energy emitted by the black body. The curves at lower temperature lie completely inside those of the higher temperature. And what does this mean? It means as we increase the temperature of the black body, what happens? Yes, the radiation emitted from each wavelength will be increased. But something very important will happen concerning the wavelength which corresponds to the maximum radiation. It decreases. So once again, the curves at a lower temperature lie completely inside those of higher temperatures. The maxima peaks of the curves, this is the very important. Maxima tend to move towards shorter wavelengths at higher temperatures. That's to say the temperature as the temperature rises, the intensity of every wavelength increases, but the intensities of the shorter wavelengths increase more rapidly. Accordingly, an increase of temperature, this is the conclusion, an increase in, of temperature causes not only an increase in the total radiation, but also shifts the peak of the radiation curve towards the shorter wavelengths. And, and now we've got Yes, veins displacement law. What about veins displacement law? The product of the wavelength lambda maximum, lambda at which the intensity of radiation is a maximum, and the absolute temperature of the radiating body is constant product. So we've got an inverse relation between lambda maximum and temperature the absolute temperature. Okay, as the absolute temperature increases, the wavelength which corresponds to the maximum radiation decreases. That's why the color shifts from, yes, thank you very much, from red to orange, yellow, and eventually to white as we increase the temperature. So once again, veins displacement low, it is the, our the product of the wavelength lambda maximum at which the intensity is a maximum and the absolute temperature is constant. We've got the curves of the sun and that of the earth. We want to distinguish between the radiation, radiations of both of them because the sun is considered as a black body, okay, and also the earth. But the earth, the temperature of the earth is much less than that of the sun. Okay, so what about the radiation of the sun and that of the earth? First of all, temperature of the surface of the sun is 6,000, so its peak wavelength, what about its peak wavelength? It lies, it is about 5,000, angstrom, 500 nanometer, and it lies in the visible region. And almost 40% of the total energy emitted by the sun is in the visible region, and about 50% in infrared radiation, infrared region. 50% is infrared radiation and the rest is distributed over the remaining spectrum. And what about the Earth? The Earth is a non-glowing object. It's not glowing such as the, unlike the Sun, the Earth is not glowing. Its temperature is much less, so the Earth is a non-glowing object whose temperature is so far less than that of the sun. So its peak wavelength, lambda maximum, lies in the infrared region. 
Okay, this was about the comparison between the radiations emitted from the sun and that emitted from the earth, as both of them are considered black bodies. And now we want to explain the black body radiation. Explanation of black body radiation. As a matter of fact, equations of classical physics were a good fit to the black body spectrum, okay, at long wavelengths, but did not work for short wavelengths. We've got a cast catastrophe, we've got a catastrophe at ultraviolet region. No one managed to explain it. So equations of classical physics were a good fit to the black body spectrum at long wavelengths, but didn't work for short wavelengths. According to the assumptions of classical physics, the intensity of radiation should increase as frequency increases. Okay, but Max Planck managed to explain it. So let's learn about Planck's explanation of the black body radiation. First of all, the radiations of the black body are composed of billions of quanta or photons. Radiations are composed of billions of photons. Each quantum is a discrete amount of energy. It is a discrete amount of energy. Energy of the photon depends on its frequency. As a matter of fact, it is proportional to its frequency. So energy of the photon equals a constant, H, Max Planck constant, times frequency. E equals H nu. E is the energy of the photon. Radiations are composed of photons. And photons are packets of energy. Okay, energy of each photon is determined by its frequency. The photon has mass and momentum. Electrons, we call it oscillators. Electrons of the atoms of the black body are responsible for radiating these photons as follows. Okay, now uh, we are talking about radiations. Okay, and electrons are responsible for radiating the energy in form of uh, photons. Electrons revolving around the nucleus can only occupy certain set of allowable energy levels. An electron does not radiate when it is in one of the allowable energy levels. But the question is when will the electron radiate? Okay. To radiate a photon, an electron should make transition from higher energy level denoted by E2 to a lower energy level E1. When it relaxes from E2 to E1, okay, E1 which has lower energy than E2, what happens? Energy is released in form of photon. So once again, to radiate a photon, an electron should make transition from higher energy level E2 to a lower energy level E1. That's to say that the energy gained or lost by electrons are quantized. Energies of electrons are not continuous but quantized. This is the explanation of the black body radiation. Energies of electrons are not continuous. As a matter of fact, energies of the radiation emitted when electrons are relaxed, yes, are quantized. Energy of an electron, E equals NH nu, where N is an integer. It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And H, of course, is Planck's constant. 
we've got an important hint here. The curves that represent the intensities of radiations emitted by different wavelengths by a black body at different temperatures support the particle model of light. And now talking about something very important. It is thermal remote sensing. What about thermal remote sensing? Thermal remote sensing is the detection of infrared radiation. It is the detection of infrared radiation. Thermal remote sensing is used in Mapping and photographing the surface of the Earth by satellites, airborne and terrestrial equipment. It is used in certain military purposes, such as detecting and imaging moving objects in the dark at night by night glasses. We call this night vision. So. This detection is used in, it has some military purposes, such as detecting and imaging moving objects in the dark. Okay, and we call this night vision. Also, it has medical uses in medicine, in tomography, which is tumor detection and embryology. It is used in criminology. How? And this is very important and very interesting. The heat radiated by a person lingers, stays for a while, for some time, in a place even after the person leaves the place. Okay? Also, it is used in spotting areas of high heat loss from buildings and detecting hot spots in power cables. So it is used in spotting areas of heat, of high heat loss from buildings and detecting hot spots in power cables. And now let's solve a problem. It is about veins low. Okay. A black body at 2000 Kelvin, its temperature is 2000 Kelvin, emits radiation with peak wavelength, yes, 1000, okay, 250 nanometer. Use this result to calculate the surface temperature of the star Cyrus if lambda maximum for Cyrus is 71 nanometer. Assume that Cyrus behaves like a black body. Okay. So we'll apply, yes, veins displacement law. What about it? We've got an inverse relation between lambda maximum and absolute temperature. So lambda maximum 1, T1 equals lambda maximum 2, T2. Product equals constant. So 1,250 times, yes, 2,000 is equal to 71 times T2. So it's all easy, T2 will be, yes, 35,200 Kelvin. The opposite figure shows the curves that represent intensities of the radiations so your attention, look at the curves well, because you need them so as to solve a problem. So the opposite, the figure shown in front of you, represent the intensities of radiations emitted by the sun and the earth at different wavelengths. If the temperature at the surface of the sun is 6,000 Kelvin, 
calculate the average temperature of the earth. Once again, we'll use Vane's law. Lambda 1, T1, lambda maximum 1, T1 is equal to lambda maximum 2, T2, so 0 0.449 times 6,000. Okay, this is the yes, p equivalences of the sun is equal to p equivalence of the earth is 9.66. So temperature on average of the earth will be okay, 39.309.93. It is 37 Celsius. Okay. And now we've got some answered questions, questions so as to be answered. First of all, give reason. The wavelength at which the intensity of radiation of the sun, wavelength at which the intensity of radiation of the sun is a maximum, lies in the visible region, while that of the Earth lies in the infrared region. Okay, according to Vane's displacement law, there is an inverse relation between lambda maximum and the absolute temperature. Lambda maximum, the wavelength at which the intensity is a maximum and the absolute temperature of the radiating object. Okay, since the Earth is a non-glowing object whose temperature is far less than that of the Sun, so its peak wavelength lies in the infrared region, while that of the sun lies in the, yes, visible region. Another give reason. When the current through the filament of a lamp is gradually increased, it begins to glow a deep dull red, become orange-yellow, and eventually appear white. Give reason. We want you to explain this. Okay. Once again, according to Vane's law, Vane's displacement law, there is an inverse relation between lambda maximum and the absolute temperature. Okay. So, as we increase the temperature, lambda maximum decreases. Another give reason. Why do the curves of the black body radiation, we call it Planck's distribute, distribution curves, support why these curves support the particle model of light? According to Planck's explanation of black body radiation, the radiation of the black body are composed of, yes, photons, quanta, we call it photons. Each quantum is a discrete amount of energy. Yes, amount of energy that has mass, momentum. So the curves support the particle because mass, something special for or characterizing for the particle. Okay. Why did the wave model of light, the classical physics, fail to explain the black body radiation. Let me say it again. Why did the wave model of light fail to explain the black body radiation? According to the wave model of light, energy of an electron could have any value. That's to say it has continuous values and the intensity of its emitted radiation should increase as frequency of radiation increases. But radiations of the black body sharply decreases at very high frequency at the region of ultraviolet, ultraviolet region. And this way we've come to the end of this edition. Until we meet again, my best wishes to you all. Thank you very much.